Hi, I'm Julia. So I recently wanted to brush up on my aerodynamics, and so I asked my professor what the most common missed intuition was amongst his students on this topic. Um, I'm going to get to that, but I'm going to start with the basics. So, there are four flight forces. There's lift, uh, weight, which is uh, force due to gravity, thrust, and then drag, which opposes motion. And so at cruise, these forces are balanced. Lift equals weight, and drag equals thrust. One of the most common things to measure would be the aerodynamic efficiency, and you will see this ratio of L over D, uh, or lift over drag. So this is the case of a glider going downhill. Um, you can see that there is lift, uh, drag opposing its downhill flight, and weight going straight down. If you do a basic horizontal force balance, you end up with um, an equation that relates the horizontal component of lift with the horizontal component of drag, and you can equate them. Also note that you can see this larger triangle here, that's the height the glider starts at, as well as the distance it travels. And that's related through 10 alpha, just trick. You can do some algebra, rearrange it, and you end up with L over D is equal to D over H. And so aerodynamic efficiency uh, can be clear to see here, where it's lift over drag relates to um, how far your uh, glider can fly at starting at a certain height. So aerodynamic efficiency, cool. Yeah, so how far can your plane fly? That's the great first question to ask while designing anything or understanding airplanes. So uh, let's do that with some basic concepts. Uh, work is force times distance, um, which in terms of aerodynamics would be drag over range. So like uh, friction opposes motion, drag opposes motion in midair within a fluid. Uh, energy is the weight of the fuel times the specific energy it takes to activate that fuel. Planes are powered by jet fuel, um, so this is how much energy they have. Um, the takeoff weight, W, is actually equal to the uh, fuel weight, the empty weight, which is landing gear and um, other things uh, that make the plane up, and then the payload weight. Let's give some context there. So these are both given in units of joules, uh, so you can equate them. The energy relates you have relates to the work you can do with the plane. So dis uh, the drag times the range um, equals the, I'm going to add an efficiency number because we, as we know, real systems all have efficiency numbers, uh, times the fuel weight and the specific energy it takes to activate that fuel. So I wanted to give some benchmarks for uh, the efficiency ADA. Electric car, very efficient, about 80%. Electric plane, less efficient, but about 50%. And a gas car is the least efficient at like 25%. Uh, for fuel to whatever ener uh, energy to work conversion ratios. So you can divide energy and work, you can divide both sides by the takeoff weight. Rearrange a little bit, know that at cruise your weight equals lift. Um, so rearranging, rearranging, and you end up with this fuel fraction, which is the weight of your fuel over the takeoff weight, which includes the fuel weight is equal to 1 over the efficiency, uh, 1 over the lift over drag ratio, and then range over the specific energy. So basically, if you have these numbers, you can estimate the distance of your aircraft. Um, of course, that's best case. And as we know, nothing is always optimized to be uh, flying at optimum efficiency. But what does efficiency mean? A very common graph you'll see is um, this double graph that has coefficients of lift and drag, which are dimensionless units, um, graphed against the angle of attack in degrees, so how the plane is uh, flying. Um, the coefficient of lift, pretty linear, goes up straight, this is the max uh, CL, and then it stalls. Uh, coefficient of drag, and you want to avoid stall. Coefficient of drag is uh, a compounded uh, has a compounded effect from the lift-induced drag when you start off as well as the parasitic drag as you speed up. So that's this parabolic curve. And then you take the ratio of the two and you have lift over drag max right over there. Uh, things to note on this is that lift and drag are actually related to velocity squared. So they're affected by velocity.
Cool. There are three main regimes of level flight. And so this is where my professor said most students get confused. Um, you can see a different um, angle of attack, so there are different types of speed. So let's assume you're at cruising speed and you want to speed up or slow down. You think, okay, to slow down, I'll decrease my thrust. What happens when you decrease your thrust? This actually leads to a lower speed, which as you remember earlier, very much lowers your lift. If your lift goes below your weight, your plane descends. So your thrust, you tried to slow down your plane, instead you started going down. Um, to compensate there, you actually can increase your angle of attack uh, you inc because you're descending and you're not in level flight anymore. So if you want to maintain that level flight, you can increase your angle of attack, which leads to increased lift, and your plane returns to level flight, and it's back in equilibrium. Um, so the main takeaway for this is that thrust actually changes the height of your level flight. Yep. <laughs> That's the main intuition that seems to trip up students, and I hope I logically got you to kind of see why uh, you have to consider all four forces together. Thank you.